Good evening and welcome to your Money in Business. I'm Jeff Salkin. Coming up tonight, how U.S. trade policy impacts consumers. But first tonight, the volatile mix of politics and marketing. With political divisions running deep, missteps can be costly for companies both large and small. Joining us now is David Warshawski, CEO of Warshawski and Integrated Marketing Communications Agency. David, thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Great to be here. So in the very early days of the Trump administration, a couple of weeks in, Kevin Plank, the CEO of Under Armour, was on CNBC. And talking to a business audience, he said something about it's nice to have a pro-business president. Social media explodes. His uh, endorsers, a, a number of them, revolt. How, how big a crisis was that? So the first is we would always counsel our clients, mixing politics and marketing communications is a no-no. Now, the way that Kevin did it in a forum that's appropriate, I don't think was too inappropriate. However, brands are so careful right now not to try and offend someone, they're very quick to apologize or to put it into context. We actually would, in general, advise, give it some breathing rooms. All great brands will have those moments. They have them more than they ever have had in the past. Now, the way they responded the first time around was textbook. The textbook approach is to talk about, we will comment on policy, not politics. How does policy affect our key stakeholders, our employees, our customers, our shareholders? That's appropriate conversation for a CEO to have when speaking with the media. Talking in specific about a politician or the politics is generally the position you don't want to take. They did something very old school in the response. They took out a full page newspaper ad right. with a statement from the CEO. What, what does that accomplish? So we would say that that probably was not a useful extension of a crisis situation. Crisis 101 is you want to put the fire out as quickly as possible and hope as few people as possible saw the fire burning. So first, if it's just a small fire, bringing attention to it is generally not the best approach. So you want to let it be for a little bit. If it rises to the level of it needs to be put out, address it with a statement as they did, and then move on. Realize that not everyone will always be happy. And here's where an important thing has come about sort of in the American media and marketing world that a lot of brands are trying to make everybody happy. And as your mom said, when you're trying to be everything for everyone, you're usually making no one happy. So most brands need to develop a little bit of a thicker skin and realize not everyone's going to love them, and that's okay. Now, coming out with that second statement in a full-length Baltimore Sun article really extended the crisis and probably added more fuel to the fire than was necessary. All this being said, Jeff, it's Monday morning quarterbacking. We've been in so many crisis communication situations as an agency. You never know the internal pressures that are being faced but we wouldn't have advised to do a second approach like that. It does feel like uh, now, a month or so later, it's kind of ancient history. Correct, and yeah. that's, that's the cycle today, is things are blowing up every day. Look, we have CEOs on a regular basis. We're securing media coverage for them and opportunities to be on CNBC for some of our CEOs. And many of them, because of the political climate, are very nervous. In, fra in fact, some of them are saying, I'm not going to go on CNBC at this point because I'm nervous of potentially being asked a political question. With appropriate training and understanding how to talk again about policies, and how the policies affect their brand, not talking about politics, that really should not be an issue. Let's dig into that for a second, because in a live interview on CNBC, in, in this politically charged environment, they're going to ask something Correct. about trade policy or, or whatever it is, or the news of the day, your client is sitting there on the, the anchor desk at CNBC, some uh, development overseas comes along, some uh, corporate development, and they're asked about it with no preparation. What, what advice could you give somebody? Well, the first I would say is you better be prepared. So you know it's coming, and part of a good, a good preparation from a CEO is to know what he or she wants to say in a situation like that. That's number one. And number two is if you keep the conversation to how it affects your employees, your shareholders and your customers, the policies that are being discussed in the language sounds something like, for a company like ours, the policy that is being discussed about lower taxes from the Trump administration either makes sense or doesn't make sense. 
for our customers, for our employees, for our shareholders, that's perfectly appropriate, and that's the place where CEOs should be going to. When you talk in general about the politician, how you feel about Trump, how you feel about politics and what's going on today, that's overstepping the bounds and guaranteed to get you in trouble. Now, you're an advocate of uh, this 360 degree surround sound kind of marketing where people are active in all sorts of different media. And, and so much of the media is polarized these days. Do you have to take care that if you're your presence on Instagram and, and Snapchat and Facebook and broadcast and, and cable, that somehow the messaging gets out of whack and you create a crisis where you, you never expected one. Yeah, so you really have to be careful that it's all integrated well and that you stay on message and you stay true to the brand. You're also very clear about who that target audience is. You don't want to hit everyone and anyone. You want to be focused on who's your primary, your secondary, and your tertiary target audience with a consistent message, hopefully an emotionally connective message that moves them to take action. But you do have to be careful about how you say it, what you say. And look, we often say to our clients, Mixing politics and marketing is like mixing vodka and milk. Each independently is fine, but when you put them together, nothing usually good comes out of it. Now, there is one small exception to that. If you, make, if you mix in just the right amount of Kahlua, you get a great white Russian. So when you know exactly how to do it and you're very artful about it, for the right scenario, it can and should be done. But in general, it's like mixing vodka and milk. All right, so the Super Bowl, we, we saw some politically charged ads uh, to some degree. Did, did they get the right amount of Kahlua? <laughs> Sadly, they didn't. Probably the biggest offender here was 84 Lumber. There were a number of them, Audi, Airbnb. Um, Budweiser even went on a little bit to the political side. And all of them paid a price for it. All of them received backlash. 84 Lumber received a tremendous amount of backlash. And in fact, they bought a minute spot. So they spent 10 million, maybe more than 10 million for their advertisement. And to find out the end of the ad, they drove people online to their website. Now, if you're going to do that, you want to make sure that your website doesn't crash during the Super Bowl. Theirs did. Not a happy ending. Does it matter what kind of business you're in? If you're running an organic grocery store, you right. can safely be associated with maybe the left side of the political spectrum and, and media that's over there. Right. If you're representing a gun manufacturer, right. you can be on the right. So there are some instances where I would say there is nuance to that and it can be accurate. But in general, my question would be to any potential client. If you're even going to offend 5% or 10% of your target audience, why take that risk? You can talk to the media that's on the left. You can talk to the media that's to the right. And stay on message talking about what makes your brand unique for your target audience, how you're different, how you may see the world without having to get into politics. You can get into policies and how it affects those core constituents. But getting into politics is going to create a problem, whether it's in the short term or in the long term. As the um, media changes in, in different ways, in the, the speed of things, in yeah. the polarization, in the technology, what are you most focused on? So we're seeing so much of a movement to digital marketing. And you're right. Just to imagine how things have changed. In the last 10 years, Microsoft says that we used to have an attention span of 12 seconds. Now our attention span is eight seconds. I'm sorry, could you say that again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's one second less than goldfish have for their attention span. So most people used to say when you're in business, you're swimming with the sharks. Today in marketing, we're swimming with the goldfish, which means visuals and getting your message across very quickly is incredibly important. We find that in social media, a post that has any kind of visual attached to it is 650% more likely to get engagement than a post that's only textual. So being quick with your message, including visuals, something that's visually engaging, incredibly important today. The, the visual works just because that's why how our brains work. Correct. So we process information from visuals faster. In fact, 60% uh, excuse me, 600,000 percent faster than we do textually. And one of the interesting things from a marketing communication standpoint, the same part of our brain that processes visual information deals with making the emotional connection. So if you want to get Warshawski, that connection, that's My attention it. span is up, unfortunately. <laughs> Mine's not. The control room is. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. It's great to see you, Jeff.